The other day I received an email. I didn't ask for the email, but there it was in my inbox. And basically this dude asked, can you make this thing that he linked me? I don't know why he wants this 3D printer effect. So I'm here to help you guy. For our object, I'm going to use a monkey. You can use whatever you want. Control one to add subsurf and shade smooth. For my convenience, I'm just gonna rotate it a little. And you could totally like add more geo to this and make it smoother. But because we are going to do a Boolean, right? If we need to cut this, we need to take a box that is moving upwards and we say wherever there's the box, or in other words, wherever there's overlap, get rid of the monkey. Well, this operation goes a lot faster if there's less geometry. Speaking of which, let's add in our slicing cube, put it above, and for our monkey, all you need to do is add in a boolean with this thing. Now I can put the cube down here, keyframe, go 90 frames down or something like that, put it above, add a keyframe, and if we hide the cube, we should now be seeing a emerging monkey. Let's see if that works. Okay, so in general, it works until it gets to the eyes, and then you get some like terrifying stuff. Basically the Boolean is not happy. So go to your Boolean. We're gonna go to the solver options, click this button and maybe also this button, which will take more time to calculate, but work. <laughs> as opposed to not working, but it is totally working. Okay, now to get those lines around it as if it's like being 3D printed, no reason to do that in geometry. You can kind of cheat that really fast with shading. First of all, I'm just gonna set up my scene, be back in a second. And now we can go to the shading workspace. For our material, we basically need to take this thing and cut it up into a bunch of pieces. Easiest way to do that is to fake it with like normal mapping. So I'm going to use a wave texture because you can see a wave texture creates these lines, put it at Z for it to go. Well, I guess we wanted it to go vertical, but because our object is rotated, it's not gonna do that. You could either modify the coordinate system or control A, apply rotation, and now it's gonna be facing upwards. I'm just going to take this and run it through a bump. So we get normal mapping, as you can see, connect that to the normal. Okay, we're getting some lines, looks weird. It's gonna look less weird the more lines we add. So now you can see it's looking more like 3D printed. I'm gonna bring it up to around 40 and you can take the strength and kind of bring it down. So it doesn't like make our thing gray, but it's still like leaving this impression. But honestly, it would be pretty boring boring to stop here. So let's do something in this like top cross section to make this look more interesting. To do that, you're gonna notice that we have material options here. Change this to transfer, which basically means if our cube has a material, it will bring it over to the cross section. So in the cube, you can make a material, let's say that it is green, and now you can see that it's over here. But the question is, what can we do to this to make it more interesting? Well, here's an idea. What if we kind of made this like grid as if it's actually being 3D printed, and that's like showing up in the cross section, that'd be interesting. Let's try to do that. And and honestly, we're just gonna use more wave textures. So this is the first one. This is the second one. You can multiply them together and make sure one's going on the Y axis. So we get this kind of like cross thing. And to make these edges sharper, although this is a cool effect, I'm just gonna go to each wave texture and process it through a greater than. We could bring this down to get like bigger spacing. So something like that. And then I was thinking we connect this to the alpha, we view it and now it's printing. Although I, I guess I wanted the opposite. So I'm just going to invert this by taking one minus that quantity. And additionally, we can make this more procedural by having a parameter for the scale. So you can see I can keep just bringing this up. And honestly, I think something that looks weird about this is the grid is like perfectly oriented to the monkey, which makes sense in the sense of how we made it. But it's kind of like boring and we can do better. So I'm going to use a coordinate system here. And the only thing I'm going to change is I'm going to rotate by like 45 degrees. So I don't know, it looks better to me. So now if we were to render this, you can imagine that it looks exactly like what it's supposed to. So there you go. You're welcome, email guy. Anyways, as always, one file is gonna be in the description. You can download that if you are a patron and I'll see you next time. Feel free to email me. I'm, I'm open to tutorial ideas.